So as promised, we're going to talk about the trapezoidal rule. I'm going to talk about it in a few different ways. Uh, so our first, the way that we're going to talk about it is an, an irregularly shaped object like a lake. So we want to measure the surface area of our lake. Uh, so we're going to need two people. And the two people are going to hold a tape measure and measure across the lake. So it's 23 metres from there to there. And then they're going to move another, say, four metres down the lake and take another measurement. We're going to continue every four metres creating another measurement. We've created a bunch of measurements every four metres, so the distance between each line is four metres. Now I've added in a little like uh, boardwalk section here just to make a flat edge on my river. So that's not part of the, the on my lake. That's not part of my lake. That's just going to make the question slightly more interesting. Okay, so now we can create a bunch of uh, trapeziums uh, from these lines. I've joined them all up with these red lines here. And if I just focus on this first trapezium here, I'll just redraw it. Now, the, the top, quotation marks, is 23 metres long. It has a height of 4 metres. And its bottom, uh, four, is 29 metres long. All right, so that's the trapezium. you sort of got to turn your head on its side to fully uh, deal with it. One more thing I'll say here, because this is a lake and we're starting from this point, there's one more measurement here. And in this particular instance, the first trapezium is actually uh, a triangle. So uh, I know it it's, looks like a triangle, not a trapezium, but it's just a trapezium with an A value of 0, 0, uh, 23, height 4. So that corresponds with that one. That corresponds with that one. And you can see that there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten trapezium. The reason I put in that boardwalk there is because on this side we have a, just a standard trapezium. On this side we have that funky triangle thing going on. Now, if I find the area of all ten of those trapeziums and add them together, I'll have a pretty good estimation of the area of the lake. A lot of different ways to talk about the area of a trapezium, but the one I'm going to use is height in this case uh, the 4 over 2 times a plus b. The, all right, so that's my formula for the area of a trapezium. But what about the formula for the area of all of these trapeziums? Logic goes that it will be total area equals the area of the first trapezium, which is h over 2 times measurement 1 plus measurement 2. Uh, so measurement 1 plus measurement 2 in this case would be 0 plus 23. And now our next trapezium is measurement 2 plus measurement 3. And measurement 2 appears here, but it also appears here. Uh, that's because this trapezium's bottom is this trapezium's top. Uh, and that continues. Measurement 3 is the next trapezium's bottom. Measurement 3 is the next trapezium's top. Dot, 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 all the way up to the last trapezium, which is measurement last minus 1, that's L minus 1, plus measurement last. Um, now, all of these terms, that's a term, that's a term, that's a term, that's a term, have H in 2 in common. Uh, so I can say H over 2. And now I've just got a bunch of measurements. Measurement 1 plus measurement 2 plus measurement 2 plus measurement 3. Measurement last minus 1 plus measurement last minus 1 plus measurement last. All right. Now, to put this into uh, layman's terms, that measurement 2 plus measurement 2, measurement 3 plus measurement 3, the, the sort of easy to work with formula is the total area is the height over 2 times um, start, let's call it height, plus um, 2 times the middles, because all of them are going to be have to be multiplied by 2, plus um, end height. All right, so no matter how you slice it, there's still going to be a lot of calculations here, but it's not as bad as the calculations could be. You might want to pause it and just like type all of that into your calculator and see if you can get it. Remember that that H is the number 4 here. I'm just going to get this done here. 
so it's going to be the height, which is 4 over 2, so that's just 2. The start height, I've made a list of all of my heights here. I've just taken them from the picture itself and listed them down the side. This way I'm not going to stuff up, I hope. Uh, so the start height is 0. Now, I need 2 times the sum of the middles. So that's going to be 23 plus 29. And finally, an end height, um, 27. All right, so that's going to be this area of this lake is 1,090 metres squared. All right, doesn't just work for lakes that have been measured this way, it also works for functions. The question, estimate the volume under the curve f of x equals x squared plus 5x between x equals 2 and x equals 5 using three trapeziums. That's a quadratic, and this is my rough sketch of what that quadratic might look like, uh, but I don't know that, uh, not, and it won't matter. Um, I want to know the area between x equals 2 and x equals 5. Boom, 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 boom. Boom, 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 boom. And I'm supposed to do it using three trapezium. So the first question you've got to ask yourself is, what should the height of each of those trapeziums be? Well, if I want to know the height of the trapezium, it's just going to be the second x value minus the first x value divided by the number of trapeziums. You'll see why that works. Um, First value is 5, subtracting 2 from that. That gives me the distance between the two x values. And then if I divide it by the number of trape trapeziums, 3. 3 over 3 is 1. The height of each trapezium is going to be 1. So that means that trapeziums are going to look like 3, 4. I'm going to have one trapezium there, one trapezium there. And drawing them up, they look like that. Now, these are trapeziums that are different to the lake trapeziums because, turn your head to the right, they're called right angle trapeziums. Okay, so that's my A value, that's my B value, that's my A value, that's my B value, that's my A value, that's my B value, or my top and my bottom of each trapezium. Then the heights, again, you've got to turn your head to see that those heights are 1, 1, and 1. Okay, so we've got to find the area of there, there, and there add them together, and we can use the exact formula that we've used. So the formula that we've used is area equals height over 2 times end, or should say start plus 2 times the middles plus the end. Now, the height, we've already figured out that's the 1, so 1 over 2. Now the start value. The start value is the height of the function, where's our function? f of x squared plus 5x when x equals 2. So the start is just f of 2 plus 2 times f of, and now we need to do that height and that height because they're our middles. So it's f of 3 plus f of 4. And we're going to we're going to add f of 3 and f of 4 together and multiply them by 2. And then finally, the end, which is f of 5. Now, maybe to make myself my life a little bit easier, I might just put that into a little table. All the x values are 2, 3, 4, and 5. 2, 3, 4, and 5. And if I put in f of 2, so if I put 2 into the equation, um, x squared plus 5x, I'll get 2 squared, which is 4, plus uh, 5 times 2, which is 10. So my first answer there would be, 14. That's my start value. If I put 3 in, 4 in, and 5 in, I'll get different numbers. f of x values, which are my uh, start, my two middles, and my end. And now all I need to do is just do a little calculation here. So just move this over a little bit so we can all see it. 1 half times um, 14 plus 2 times 24 plus 36 plus 50. And that should give us a pretty sweet number. Sort of about 92 um, units squared. All right. Uh, that is the full and complete version of the trapezoidal rule.